Uh, we're talking with Beverly Gray. How many books have you written? Well, uh, my book about Roger Corman was my first book, and I have a second one coming out this coming March, which is the first ever biography of Ron Howard. That is amazing to me that, that, that that's going to be the first biography ever. Well, to be completely fair and honest, there is one young adult book, you know, one of those nice people to know right. books. But that's it. That is amazing. Uh, I think you know just the the output of work that he's done, uh, and it's it's like uh, it's like everyone just sort of knows him as Opie, or even knows him as um, you know Richie, and 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 they just um, sort of you know forget the rest. Well, I think that was kind of a problem and kind of a reason why there aren't more books out there, uh, because people have those images of him so ingrained that they forget that he's something beyond those things. And, of course, the whole story of his life, to some extent, is getting beyond those uh, friendly images. Yeah, yeah. Um, how? Let's let's go back a little bit. How? When um, when you were in college, what were you? You know, what was your major? What were you going for? Okay, well, this is interesting. Uh, when I was in college, which seems like eons ago, I was an English major, and my whole goal in life was to be an academic and to be. Uh, female equivalent of the professor with the patches on the sleeves teaching literature in some cozy college and I, I firmly believe that that was my destiny and it was supposed to work out uh, so I got a PhD in English but a funny thing happened midway through my graduate studies when I was actually somewhat close to my dissertation and when jobs were, were difficult to come by then as now I got a call from a professor I knew pretty well who was the faculty head of the Phi Beta Kappa chapter on the UCLA campus. He said a man named Roger Corman has called me and he's looking for an assistant. And because in addition to focusing on 20th century American literature of the most literary sort, I was also writing movie and theater reviews for the Daily Brew and the school paper. So I guess this professor automatically thought of me as someone with an interest in pop culture. And also I was female, and with Roger that always helped. <laughs> so I was called into his office to discuss this potential job with him, and I was told to read a, a very, very um, abstruse book called Theory of Film by a man named Siegfried Krakauer so that he and I could discuss it if I took the job. And I did read this book, and I wondered while reading it what it could possibly tell me about making nurse movies and biker films. And I was very eager to find out what Roger had to say about this book, but the subject never came up again. Do you think he ever read the book himself? Yeah, I do. And uh, actually, one very interesting conversation I had was with Monty Hellman, who, as I'm sure you know, is a somewhat of a cult favorite kind of filmmaker, particularly from the, what, 70s, who was making these edgy little movies like Tulane Blacktop. And he, of course, like everybody else, had come out of Roger Corman's enterprises. And when I interviewed Monty and I mentioned Six Feet Krakauer, he said, you know, I very, I'm interviewed fairly often and I very rarely learn anything new while doing interviews, but I had no idea that Roger an interest in Krakauer. He said Krakauer was my god. He was my the source of my aesthetic, and Roger and I uh, discussed. I, I told him all about Krakauer once on a, a trip up the coast, but I had no idea that he was asking other people to to read it and to uh, to adopt this philosophy. So we can thank Krakauer for uh, Cockfighter. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. was one of the strangest movies <laughs> that I remember seeing as well, a kid. yes, I worked on Cockfighter, and boy, was that one a pain in the neck. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my gosh! And just like, uh, but it, it, what an incredible performance by Warren Oates. <laughs> yeah, it is indeed, and we all got kind of excited about it and kind of confused by it. And you should read the novel it's based on. the The author of that novel, who actually wrote the screenplay, thinks he's writing a remake of the Odyssey. It had mm. symbolism all over it. Wow. And uh, fortunately, the symbolism went out, but a movie about a cockfighter who's taken a vow of silence? Well, the really funny thing about the movie, though, is that Roger, we discovered, thought it was going to be a huge hit because he thought it would be this 
down and dirty, violent movie about this wildly underground sport. And he also thought the title sounded sexy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so he made the movie. They, they went to Atlanta and they made the movie. I think there's a gay film called Cockfighter, in fact. <laughs> Not be surprised. Um, so they made the movie and they had a big uh, premiere in Atlanta. And then they discovered the, the awful truth, which was that the people in Atlanta didn't want to have anything to do with the spite of sport of cockfighting, that they considered it uh, a humiliation that any movie called Cockfighter was something they had no, yeah, well, really no interest in seeing. Yeah, I actually have a kind of an interesting uh, thing. with. Actually, I saw that movie in uh, Dothan, Alabama. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it was at a, a, a drive-in called the Peanut, it's called the Peanut Drive-In, and uh, I, I just remember, you know, there just being... A lot of people at the concession stand not really interested in watching the movie, uh, and it just seemed like they were kind of saddened. <laughs> I mean, it was like, in a way, because um, I think there was a lot of cockfighting going on in, in that particular part of the... Um, of they the found it embarrassing as well? Yeah, I think so. Well, that's interesting. And then the really funny thing, and uh, working for Roger in that era, you did a little of everything, and one of the many things I did was publicity. And uh, suddenly when we realized that calling the movie Cockfighter was a very bad decision, then suddenly we had to change the title. So we went through all sorts of titles, and of course my favorite, uh, but this was purely, it's a joke, was